What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at creating custom shapes in Swift UI. So this is something I promised a couple of videos ago, so we're finally at it. We'll take a look uh, in today's example, creating this triangle and this semicircle, but more generally, we'll talk about just custom shapes overall, how you can create your own, what's available to you and whatnot. So if that sounds good, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm helps out a lot. Hit subscribe while you're at it into iOS. That all said, let's get into the video. All right, let's begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and give our project a name of custom shapes. You wanna make sure your language is set to Swift and both your interface and lifecycle are set to Swift UI. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, we're gonna close this right panel. We'll go ahead and expand our Xcode window. And I'm also gonna go ahead and select a different preview device. Maybe we'll go with the 12 Pro Max. And we'll hit the resume button at the top right here in our canvas to load up our preview. So I've got a separate video talking about the basic shapes that are built into Swift UI, but I promised I'd make a video about custom shapes. So today we're gonna to take a look at that. So a shape is nothing more than a path that is defined uh, that encloses a shape. So something like a quadrilateral or a triangle or a star, and you can get pretty crazy with it. So we're gonna uh, make a, uh, a triangle today. So let's go ahead and create a struct called a triangle, and it's going to extend, you guessed it, a shape. Now you only need to actually fill in one function in here, and it's gonna start yelling at me in uh, two seconds, there it is that we need to bring in this function. And this function basically defines the path that uh, should be taken to draw this shape. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a path here. And let's talk about what a path is and for a triangle, what that entails. So let's go ahead and create a path, which is nothing more than instantiating a path and returning it. And in between here, we wanna draw the lines of path. So if you think about a triangle uh, from a basic geometry perspective, you want to uh, you know, start at top middle, then you wanna move to bottom left, then move to bottom right, and then go back to uh, or end at top middle again. So if you think about this from a geometry perspective, you know, you're starting at the top middle, you're moving down to the bottom left for the bottom left vertex, and then the bottom right for that vertex, and then back to the very top starting point, hence closing out your triangle uh, for your path. Now a path here is nothing more than a Bezier path or a Bezier path, depending how you say it. And it offers a variety of functionality to you where you can not only add straight lines between different CG points, but you can also add curves. So if you ever think about like the circle that is available to you, um, you know, built into Swift UI, uh, Apple uses uh, adding arcs and that brings in more geometry and trigonometry where you can add, you know, an arc with a particular radius and a particular diameter. And, you know, you get into dealing with pi and things of that nature. But before we go ahead and add all of these, it's rather simple. Let's go ahead and uh, spruce up our primary content view here. Uh, that we will add our triangle into. So we'll go ahead and add a navigation view. I'm gonna add a V stack inside of here. Let's go ahead and give this guy a title. We'll go ahead and say custom shapes. And uh, we're gonna wanna put triangle in here. So we'll just go ahead and say triangle, just like that. So let's go ahead and give it a foreground color, maybe color.red. Now let's go ahead and see what we get on the right hand side. We're actually not gonna get anything if I'm not mistaken as soon as our preview decides to do its job. The reason we're not seeing our red triangle is because we haven't really added anything into this path. All we're doing is instantiating it and then returning it right down here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can see that this function takes in a CG rect. We're gonna use that to uh, proportionally calculate our actual path. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna say path, so we're gonna say move, and we want to move to a CG point. So this is basically the XY starting point of our triangle. So we're going to go ahead and say we want the mid of the X, so halfway across the CG Rex uh, X axis, and we want the X dot min Y, which is going to be the minimum Y value, aka the very top. So if we take a look at why this is yelling at me, change let to var, 
which makes sense. We want to mutate this path. So we're going to make that a uh, path variable mutable. So now that we have a starting point, we want to start moving and adding lines. So uh, what's the command for it? It's pretty simple. There is a function called add line and we can say add a line to a given path uh, or a given CG point, I should say. And this one is going to be a CG point again with an X and a Y. Now we want to move to the bottom left. So if we think about this, this is the max Y or this is the X rather. So this should be the min X, which is all the way to the left. And the Y should be the very bottom, which is going to be the max Y. And that's looking good. And we can actually copy and paste this. The next thing we want to move to is the bottom right. So this is going to be the max X. So this is the maximum uh, that we can go on the X axis and max Y, which is the absolute bottom right of our rect. And then finally, we're going to want to go back to the starting point, which is going to be once again, the rect dot mid X and rect dot min Y. So this is the basic path of a triangle and you can actually already see it uh, appearing over here in real time. Thanks to Swift UI being nice and nifty and we have a triangle showing up. So if we look at this, we start at the top, we move to the bottom left and then we go to the bottom right. Now, one thing you'll notice is that it's kind of elongated. It's not proportional. So to fix that, you can, uh, you know, define a frame on this guy and just make it, uh, you know, a, a square by making it a proportional width and height. Maybe we go with like 150 by 150. Let's change this color too because I don't like the red. And now we have a nicer looking triangle. Now you can imagine that you can get pretty nuts with these custom shapes. You can make things like stars or hexagons or entirely custom shapes. If you ever see apps that have really cool looking shapes or if you ever see libraries that help you plot like graphs and like charts and whatnot and you've always wondered, well, how do I achieve this like really cool curve? Um, I also know Apple loves to do these custom shapes. This is what they're doing. They're using Bezier paths, which is a path in SwiftUI, and they're just defining the uh, vertices and the lines that connect those vertices, a little geometry for y'all. And once you have it defined, you can use it just like a custom shape. So in this case, we've got a triangle. We're setting a frame modifier. We've got a background color. Um, you can go crazy with it. You can do whatever you want. We can add a maybe on tap gesture. So we can say on tap. Uh, go ahead and do something. So let's go ahead and, I don't know, let's go ahead and add a state on here for the sake of a uh, demo. We'll say scaled, we'll just say scale and we'll go ahead and say this is uh, by default. CG float, we'll go ahead and say this is one. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and say self.scale will be two. And you guessed it, we're going to add a scale effect onto this and a scale effect takes in a uh, CG float, right? like that and we'll go ahead and say this is the scale let's go ahead and hit resume over here we'll hit the live preview little play button if I go ahead and tap on it you'll see that it scales up now it didn't scale with an animation because we need to be smarter about this and add the animation modifier and if we try that one more time let's go ahead and pause this and run it again you'll see that our triangle will uh, will expand um, the point of me showing that is that this shape even though it's a custom shape is nothing different than any other type of Swift UI view you can use them with your um, different gestures. You can use them as buttons. If we wanted to make uh, this triangle a button, we can definitely do that. We can take this whole thing. We can go ahead and uh, create a button here with a uh, action and a label. And then we can toss the button in or the triangle in just like that. Of course, we would get rid of uh, these guys. Uh, and in this case, we can go ahead and say maybe self.scale uh, is equal to three, just for the purposes of making sure this button is working. We'll go ahead and hit run one more time. I'll tap on it and you'll see our triangle gets obnoxiously big. So there you have it. That's a custom shape. Before I wrap it up, let me show you one more thing. So let's say you wanted to deal with arcs. Uh, I'm not going to go into it because the calculation gets a little messy because, you know, geometry, but you can go ahead and say path and you can see there's an add arc here. And the add arc uh, basically takes a tangent. It can also take a, a center point, a radius, a start angle, and an end angle. So for those of you who used to love trigonometry back in school, this is perfect for you. So center being, um, so we can actually maybe, let me see if I can get through a quick little demo because circles are always a little tricky to calculate, but uh, we'll see how my math skills fare today. So midpoint, we can go ahead and say, this is going to be a CG point. X is going to be, the rect dot mid x and the y will be rect dot uh, mid 
mid y so that'll give us the center points the next thing that we want is the radius so we are going to say this is going to be rect dot uh, size dot width divided by two since it's a circle the start angle will be uh, angle and we're gonna want actually an angle with degrees I believe and we can say it has a starting degree of zero the end angle let's say we want uh, you know a semicircle so we're gonna go ahead and say degrees we're gonna say 180 and then this is the direction that this should uh, take when it draws in the circle. So we'll go ahead and say clockwise is false. So it'll be uh, anti-clockwise. And there is our semi-circle. So if you ever wanted to animate like, uh, you know, a clock or like something like that, these custom shapes are wonderful to do it. They're really simple to use. And so long as, uh, you know, you have a fairly basic understanding of some geometry and you can, uh, you know, figure your way out through this, the sky's the limit. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Fairly short and sweet video. If you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, don't forget to smash the like button down below. It helps out tremendously. Leave a comment if you have any feedback, video suggestions, ideas. Always love hearing from you guys. And I especially love, you know, making stuff that, actually benefits all of you and of course if you enjoy ios and swift and haven't subscribed to the channel definitely smash the subscribe button while you're at it keep the channel going and growing together thanks a lot for watching i'll catch you on the next one